Hi, I'm Tracy, VE3TWM. Thank you for tuning in to Outdoors on the Air. If you've spent any time at all installing ham radio antennas that feature coaxial feed lines, the chances are good you've experienced negative results in certain installations. These undesired conditions include interference to televisions, radios, or landline and cordless telephones while transmitting. Alarm systems, audio systems, and other electronic devices might also be affected every time you key up. Further, you may have experienced personally harmful side effects as a result of an improper antenna installation. If you have ever been shocked when touching your rig, antenna tuner, or microphone while transmitting, you quickly discovered there was a problem with your station setup. Then there are antennas that were carefully installed, but do not provide the level of front-to-back or front-to-side ratio that you would expect. Finally, is your QTH noisy from an RF perspective? Our homes are littered with RF-producing consumer products that can add multiple S-units to the noise floor on even the most sophisticated receivers. One or more of these issues plague many modern ham shacks. What if I were to tell you that adding one reasonably priced item to your antenna system could reduce or eliminate all these effects? In this video, I'm going to show you how to fix these issues with a single superhero accessory. I'd like to state now for the record that the subject of this video is a very deep topic. This video will only take a look at the material from a 50,000 foot view and by no means is intended as a technical reference. I'll post some internet resources in the video description for those that would like to learn more. But first, let's examine why these unwelcome conditions occur in the first place. In this illustrative example, here is a typical wire antenna. The coax comes away from the antenna and down to the operating position. You can see in the diagram, even though the cable is on the outside of the building, it passes next to a minefield of RF sensitive and RF generating devices. Down in the shack, the coax terminates at the transceiver. Now let's examine the behavior of the antenna itself. A wire antenna, up high and in the clear, where it is not subject to close proximity of anything that will cause the antenna to detune, is set up to work perfectly. It is radiating RF to the outside world to the best of its ability. But in certain cases, the coaxial feed line is affected by the radiation emitted by the antenna. Transmitted RF energy is applied to and carried down the coax along the outer edge of the coaxial braid. This effect is common when the feed line is parallel to an active antenna element. In effect, the coax is acting as a counterpoise. The resulting condition is known as feed line radiation. When the feed line is radiating, the radiation pattern of the antenna is modified, reducing the front-to-back or front-to-side ratio. The antenna will not perform as designed, performance will suffer. Some people will advise to improve the station ground. A more straightforward and effective way to resolve the problem is to isolate the coax from the antenna currents. We do this by adding a device to introduce inductive reactants to the antenna system. This device is known as a line isolator, a common mode choke or a ballon. High performance line isolators are far more effective than low performance ones. When categorizing, high performance means high impedance. The impedance should be several thousand ohms, be effective across a wide bandwidth, and be mainly resistive. This inductive reactance will not affect the RF power delivered to the antenna. Adding a line isolator at the antenna will stop feed line radiation 
ensuring the antenna's natural radiation pattern is preserved. However, in some cases, feed line radiation is induced in the feed line after the line isolator. In these cases, adding a second line isolator at the shack will further reduce feed line radiation. We've now taken care of antenna performance in regard to radiation pattern. But what about radio frequency interference caused by your transmitter? The line isolator helps there too. Once you install the line isolator at your antenna and stop feed line radiation, you've dramatically increased the distance between your transmitted RF and the RF sensitive devices. Most, if not all, of your RFI issues will vanish. In some extreme cases, adding a line isolator to your power cables may be necessary. Now what about RF in the shack? It's no fun to get bitten by RF while transmitting when touching your microphone, key, antenna tuner, or rig. But since you've got one or more line isolators installed in the feed line, you won't be bitten again. That RF power is only up at your antenna, where it belongs. Finally, what was that I said about multiple S units of noise caused by devices in your home? A nice bonus of adding line isolators to your antenna system is that since your feed line is no longer part of your antenna, you may see a dramatic decrease of two or more S units worth of noise at your rig. This is due to the RF noisy devices now being out of the range of your antenna system, which no longer includes that coax running close enough to those devices to pick up their hash. That'll help you work those weak ones. In closing, I'd like to thank Ian White, Golf Mike 3 Sierra Echo Kilo, for his contribution to my knowledge specifically through his cost-effective common mode chokes and balance presentation. A link to the presentation can be found in the video description. Other resources I used include work published by Oscar November 7 Foxtrot Uniform, November India 4 Lima, and Whiskey 1 Hotel India Sierra. I hope you have found this video helpful. Thank you for watching. 73 from Tracy, VE3, TWM.